Hey everyone, welcome back. Oh my, an edited video. There's a lot more to show for a new frame, so I'm sorry this took a little bit as I prioritized the new augments first yesterday. Today, I'm gonna show you four different ways to play Dante, for varying ways to DPS, and from basic steel path all the way to endurance. Dante is the new frame in this update, and you can farm him from Armatus, the new Whispers in the Wall node in the Sanctum. It's Disruption, with Necromex as Demolists. Having problems killing them? They cannot be full stripped under any circumstances. Bring radiation, build for crits, shoot the weak points, shoot the back. That's the easiest way to kill them. Yes, there are a couple of cheese strats like Trinity percent HP DPS, but it really isn't necessary. Don't bring AoE or massive bullet hoses unless in Carnons to kill them. It will take a fair bit of damage. Okay, so Dante himself. My initial impressions are that Dante is Equinox, but made in modern day Warframe to be less annoying to use, combined with the potential chaining style of Kulervo for massive AoE, but less damage. Think of a more balanced Kulervo skin. That's Dante. Dante is a more playstyle oriented frame than build dependent, especially because this forward depends on what abilities you casted beforehand. An open-ended frame with many opportunities for future synergies, but let's look at the base kit. If you're curious about survivability, I have a separate point on that after going over his kit. So his passive is... forget about it. It scans enemies into the codex for you. That's nice, but the extra 50% status? It's annoying to test if this is innate status, final status, or multiplicative status. It doesn't matter, you don't need to do anything to benefit from this passive, it just exists. It's useful at least, but don't think too much about it. I would not make builds designed around it. His first ability is Noctua, the Exalted Spellbook. There's not too much to unpack here, it is a projectile weapon with projectile ricochet that affects three nearby enemies if you hit a target with original shot. It has infinite body punch through on both modes. The alt fire has 1.4 meters terrain punch through, meaning it can shoot through this, but not this. Punch through is determined by the center pixel only, letting you shoot around corners. Now contrary to popular belief, I'm gonna be honest, I think people just don't know how to build for his book. This thing hits like a truck. It falls behind the most meta options like Torrid Carnon and Brahma-like categories, but has absolutely no problem destroying things on Steel Path and Endurance. I pin it at about 110-120 kpm and easily keeps up with life support. It's basically the best version of the Archaplasmor family weapons we've ever had. Yes, it's literally a full auto Archaplasmor with bottomless mag. Feels a million times better than the grimoire we got with Whispers in the Wall. Smaller projectiles on main fire mode, big one on alt fire. And it uses pistol mods. We don't have access to weapon arcanes, but to compensate, the total damage of the weapon scales with strength. It's like having a built in eclipse. It is also a pistol, and pistol mods are the strongest class of mods available. It's just that primary weapons themselves usually have better weapon mechanics. There's one important bug to note though. Gun Seal is additive to this weapon and only has about 90% of its intended scaling. Now, that doesn't sound too bad, but also Gun Seal permanently scales off of default 100% strength. This part is very bad, because book DPS builds typically run about 300% strength, meaning Gun Seal is only contributing about one third the damage it should be doing, making it not worth slotting. Also, your energy colors and your Warframe control the Bloom Light color of this Exalted, and the secondary color channel of your energy determines the texture color, so if you don't want to blind yourself, set the first color to black and set the second color to whatever you want. His second ability is Light Verse. It's cheaper than normal and only costs 25 energy. It heals, grants small overguard, and enforces an overguard cap value. Don't worry, the cap is typically quite high. It also grants the same effects to all other allies within radius scaling with range. Honestly, this ability is quite useless and its only purpose is to count as a heal, as it can activate Archon Intensify even when you're at full health, meaning you don't need to use Umbral Intensify. The real reason to use this is to set up your 4, which we will explain in a bit. His third ability is Dark Verse. It only costs 25 energy to cast. It is a cone-shaped ability with moderate angling at 50 degrees. It force procs slash to all enemies in range, and range only scales up the distance of the cone but not the angle. The attack is hit scan and has a hard line of sight check. It has slight detection issues. And it would say out of every 50 enemies you hit that you should be able to hit, it will fail to hit one. Probably something involved with body blocking, but it's relatively minor and will not be that significant since on caster builds you spam this ability. The damage it deals is high enough. You can kill things with this pretty comfortably on base steel path alone by just spam casting it. I would not recommend using this as a main way to kill enemies above 2 hours steel path, even with roar. 
beyond that point, I would strongly recommend considering his fourth ability skill sets to scale your damage further. It's also a lot more interesting than just spamming his three forever. His three is also very, very loud to spam cast for some reason. His fourth ability is Final Verse, and has four iterations. Its effect depend on what order your last two casts of your second and third ability were. You cannot cast this ability until you've casted any combination of your two and three twice. Casting order two, two, or light light, turns your four into triumph, which is your bread and butter for survivability. Triumph grants a relatively large amount of overguard, typically at least 12,000 per cast on a decent build, but more importantly regenerates overguard passively off kills and assists. This is extremely important because overguard itself has a 0.5 seconds gate, with Dante himself having default 240 shields, for an additional 1.1 seconds gate. He has built-in 1.6 seconds gate overall, thus, without needing catalyzing shields or anything else. With the high firepower Dante has, your overguard should not be breaking that often in typical steel path content. This overguard buff also applies to allies within range, scaling with, well, range. Tragedy is enabled by casting Order 3-3, or Dark Dark. This is a spherical expedite suffering. It applies in a perfectly spherical AoE and goes through walls. It is hard to take full advantage of this ability set box, but on the other hand, it means it is always capable of detonating stacks on any kind of status setup you are interested in using, since so few loadouts can prime elements in that big of an AoE. TLDR, everything in a sphere has their damage dealing statuses summed up equal to their full duration, dealt all that damage in a single hit, and then multiplied by 3, scaling with strength. A typical tragedy build will have around a 7.5 times multiplier or higher. This is your main way to amplify dark vs spam builds and a required tool for nuking in endurance. Word Warden is created by casting order 2-3, or Light Dark. It basically spawns a sentinel at your hip that attacks with you. It works with both melees and guns, however it attacks once per player action, not per damage instance. So higher multi-shot on your guns or using gun blades with pellet count will not make the book hit more times. It does not work like Toxin Lash, and it does not re dip Banes or other buffs. It just straight up deals 30% of the intended damage of your Noctua Exalted weapon would deal if you wielded the Exalted book yourself. Yes, this means you need to mod the book to make Word Warden worth it. Most importantly, Word Warden in this form is unaffected by multi-shot and fire rate. As a spell book, it obviously isn't affected by reload either. It is affected by base damage mods, elements, and status chance. Conditional mods do not work here, aka galvanized mods. Page Flight is the last variant, caused by Castle Order 3. Two, or Dark Light. It spawns three birds that circle around you and passively attack enemies for basically zero damage. The main benefit is enemies hit by the birds gain status chance vulnerability, scaling with strength. Status vulnerability is a new stat that makes enemies take more damage from a given status effect. Usually, you won't need to cast this, as spamming your three rounder using tragedy deals enough damage. However, this can be a massive damage amplifier when needed and is good for priority targets like Acolyte or bosses since it makes each status proc deal significantly more damage. I would primarily consider using this on weapon platform builds or book DPS builds. I'm also unsure if this stat is bugged as the status vulnerability results in frequently 10 times or more damage than normal, whereas the listed stat isn't shown as such. A typical build reaches about 125-150% to status vulnerability. Alright, survivability. Now, how does Dante fare in Steel Path and up? Well, much better than Kulervo, actually. His 2 has iframes that last longer than the cast itself. All variants of his 4 grant iframes during cast. Only casting your 3 or casting using your 1 doesn't grant iframes. You can chain multiple iframe casts together, such as casting 224 to get Triumph active for as well instant overguard and regen. Since you have access to instant iframes that can be chained, as well as instant overguard, you do not need health, shields, armor, or damage reduction. So long as you cast your 2 when your overguard breaks, which has a very distinct sound effect, you cannot die. You're immune to all status effects and knockups too while overguard is active, meaning you do not have to always equip Rapture Footed on Dante. Casting speed is strongly, strongly recommended. Ability nuke builds should run both natural talent and casting speed shards in some combination so you can get plus 100% cast speed. Whereas weapon platform or book DPS builds only need a single source of either casting speed shards or natural talent. So let's look at those builds. Build 1 is your cookie cutter most basic weapon platform Dante. One of natural talent or 50% in casting speed shards is recommended. This is your Inaros Dante, eschewing kit nuance and complexity for just comfy run and gun. 
Your subsume slot is your one, preferably for damage buffing rather than armor strips. Roar or Nourish will be popular choices, because these want the same stats that the rest of his kit needs. We build super high duration and strength and dump efficiency and range. The only thing on this kit that scales with range, besides applying buff to allies, is the hitbox of your third ability. Since this is a weapon platform Dante, we don't care about that. High duration means you only need to reset buffs from your 4 once every 118 seconds for maximum comfort, including molt efficiency. You will want Triumph active for survivability, granting the status immunity in Overguard regen. Tragedy is available if you need it, but most weapon platform setups usually are strong enough already. We also didn't build for range, so Tragedy would only be used to kill Acolytes or Demolets on the setup. Word Warden should always be used, because it can mod to be added a free status primer to stick viral or other elements for gun seal priming, or condition overload since it also attacks alongside melees. Page Flight will massively buff any weapon setup that focuses on status due to status vulnerability. Energy Nexus is used because this alone fully offsets all your energy needs. Casting Triumph and Word Warden costs 310 energy overall. Because they last 118 seconds, Energy Nexus will regen 354 energy in that time. Page Flight will cost you an extra 155 energy, but that can easily be offset by natural orb drops. These buffs last forever, after all. Preparation must flex slot since I have literally nothing left to slot. The other arcane slot is used for attack speed or fire rate arcane suiting your DPS tools of choice. Now this is how my Noctua modded as a status applier word warden for a weapon platform build. Remember that only base damage, elements, and status chance applies to word warden. I'm going for viral, radiation, and heat. Build 2 is all about book DPS. One of natural talent or 50% in casting speed shards is recommended. Dark first spam and tragedy usage does lead to higher KPM than book DPS setups, however book DPS has much higher targeted DPS, which can still be useful. Remember, it basically shoots small Archoplasma shots at full auto with the altfire shooting a big one. Archon intensify is used because you have to cast your 2 anyways to set up triumph to survive. Noctua snapshots the strength, so it's basically free. 67 duration is fine because it still makes Triumph's Overguard regen last for 30 seconds as well as Word Warden and Page Flight. Headshots are easy to accidentally achieve with the book's hitboxes. A single range mod is recommended for your 4 if you're used to hitting more ranged targets. Otherwise, it's just Spray and Prey and the occasional Tragedy cast. Arcane Velocity is strongly recommended because the book shoots by default slow. The book DPS build looks like this. I've opted for Viral since the weapon is originally 100% Slash. This is the only build you need, because the Corrosive book only works at base steel path, and doesn't work well in Endurance unless you have Jiao Canticle or Running Emerald Shards. At that point, you might as well just use a Viral build, since Viral Slash obviously works at base steel path and in Endurance and doesn't need Emerald Shards, and Jahu will also have removed all of their defenses if you have a constant onslaught of enemies, and the Viral Prox and Viral Damage bonus against Flesh will be superior to Corrosive. Even if they somehow still have armor, the Slash Prox can kill. Noctua does not need a Bane, it already hits extremely hard. Jahu is better than the Bane, especially because they can also remove shields. Multi-shot is extremely important because charge meter for Altfire is dependent on weapon hits, and the weapon has infinite body punch through. The Altfire is innate impact and radiation and cannot slash, so modding for Viral allows you to boost its damage much further as well. As a bonus synergy, use Aphentis if you want bonus fire rate. The reload speed doesn't really factor in because this weapon never reloads. It's minor and I find it a bit annoying to use, but more importantly, bring any stat stick pistol you want. Its only purpose, I don't care about the mods, is to carry secondary outburst. This is what allows your Noctua to go from yellow and orange crits to orange and red crits, as well as crit much, much harder. Secondary Outburst grants 240% crit chance and crit damage if it can consume 220 combo from your melee. The best choice for this is Ceramic Dagger, unless you're willing to stack melee crescendo with some other melee, because the Gun and Blade perk can grant it 100 initial combo. Gun and Blade can stack off book kills despite it stating it wants primary kills, meaning you can play as normal with a book and don't need to kill with your primary weapon. Evolution 3 can grant another 20 initial combo, and built like this, Corrupt Charge and Covert Lethality bring the total all the way to 166 initial combo. And you even have the option to run ribbons with initial combo to always have 220. With this much attack speed and range, a simple double swing into a crown is typically enough to even bring a ribbonless build to 220 combo. Pull out your pistol or Noctua to proc the buff. It does not matter which secondary proc it, as it applies globally to all secondaries on your loadout. Build 3 is about ability nuke spam gear towards Darkverse. 
There are two ways to use this. Spam Dark Force forever, or cast Dark Force twice while running through a crowd and cast your 4 for tragedy to nuke a sphere around you. As this is an ability nuke build, natural talent plus 50% in casting speed shards is strongly recommended. You do not need much duration, as most enemies will die from Dark Force spam, and if not, then tragedy. Page Flight is not needed outside of Acolytes and Demlists. Molt Efficiency bumps us back up to 103 duration for 30 second roars and 45 second triumphs. Boreal's Hatred is a flex slot here and provides both longer shield gate and getting us to 175 efficiency, so casting costs 6.25 energy per Dark Force instead of 10. Archon Intensify is used because you have to cast your 2 anyways to set up Triumph to survive. It also snapshots onto Roar and Triumph. The true strength of this build is actually to 70 due to growing power and Molt Augmented. I stack this with Matarite for more strength and casting speed, but you don't have to. Even without it, this is a minimum 81% Roar or making Bleed Steel 3.28 times more damage because of Double Dip. Matarai would of course make a snook even harder and faster. You basically run around spamming your 3 and detonate with your tragedy as needed. Because we're running 145 range, tragedy has a 43.5 meter radius through walls, meaning you can run pretty far through a crowd and you will still kill everything instantly way behind you after you tag them with a Darkverse. Darkverse itself has a 29.5 meter hitbox on this build. Very simple to use, very satisfying. Build 4 is getting into unusual endurance setups. Both natural talent and plus 50% casting speed shards are recommended. The best scaling setup is melee influence with tragedy. Now this shouldn't be surprising, but melee influence is the only AoE tool we can have that can spread status effects in a big enough sphere through walls to fully take advantage of tragedy nuking through walls. You run two emerald corrosive shards so that you can play any melee you want in mod corrosive heat. You swing at an enemy two to five times depending on your melee to full strip with corrosive and cast tragedy to nuke with heat procs. The sickening pulse variant is interesting because it doesn't actually care about high range like armor strips, nor does it need to worry about high duration like roar and also doesn't care about strength. It just instantly adds 10 stacks of corrosive if it was already present, which is why swinging your melee just a few times is enough. It adds a single heat proc equal to all other heat procs present, basically doubling your burn DPS. Then you cast tragedy and all those heat procs explode for millions and millions of damage on enemies you could never see, which is something Dark Verse cannot do because the slash hitbox has a hard line of sight check whereas melee influence doesn't. Now I would not recommend running this setup with any armor strip because it is way too cast heavy and stat demanding. Armor strips require either super high strength for pillage or high range like Terrify. Terrify is also expensive to cast and also makes enemies run away. We can also use Precision Intensify on the Sickening Pulse variant because only Tragedy needs strength here. Using non-daggers requires you to activate melee influence somehow, which you can either do with a force proc melee for electric, like Prova Vandal, Plasma Sword on Slam, or Corum on its block combo. Or, well, I'll drop this curious Diriga build here that I have lying around. Yes, it still works. You need to figure out where to get your electric procs from to activate melee influence. Because this kind of setup is more cast heavy, I opted for slightly higher duration so that you only need to recast buffs related to your 4 every 50 seconds. Spam melee, then cast sickening pulse, then cast tragedy. Make sure in both setups to double cast dark verse immediately afterwards so you can reset to have tragedy available again. Your survivability depends on triumph being available. If you feel like you don't need this kind of damage and you want to survive better in level cap, feel free to drop precision intensify and boreal's hatred for stretch and augur reach and then subsume either resonator or muzzle's flash shooting gallery which can go over natural talent. Here is an example Prova Vandal build. You can use the exact same setup on Plasma Sword or Corum and use their force procs to activate melee influence. Or well, you know, you can use this on any melee if you know. Obviously use the right bane as it triple dips on melee influence which is big when they're full strip for tragedy to nuke. Corrosive rips off the armor with emerald shards plus sickening pulse. If you swing for a few seconds, it can also work without sickening pulse and you can now bring roar instead. All melee builds today should be using dexterity arcanes for combo duration too. And that's it, 4 completely different ways to play Dante, be it for entry steel path or endurance, weapon platform or ability nukes, or even his exalted book, he has a lot to offer. 
I hope this build was insightful and let your playstyle choice be more clear. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I try my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like I've done with the Whispers in the Wall update and now Dante's Unbound. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.